Hey, hey guys, Adam here with another educational video. This video is all about aircraft wings, as you might have guessed from reading the title. In this video, I'll go over all the important aspects of wings such as lift, drag, geometry, structure, and I'll do so by using a ruler to demonstrate a few simple principles. With this video, you should be able to tell the purpose or mission of an aircraft from the design of its wing, and also identify synergetic combinations between wing characteristics for our World War II fighter design experiment. So, without further ado, let's wing it. First off, what's the purpose of the wing? Its purpose is to generate lift so that the aircraft can take off and turn. The efficient way to produce the required lift is to use an airflow shape for the section of the wing as seen from the side of it. A flat wing wouldn't generate nearly as much lift and would generate more drag in most cases. This brings us to the concept of lift coefficient, CL, and drag coefficient, CD. There's nothing complicated about these coefficients, they are just useful to compare airflows between them. Here we have the airflows for the root and tip of the P51D. As the name implies, the root airfoil is at the junction between the fuselage and the wing, and the tip airfoil is at the tip of the wing. It's typical to have two or more airfoil sections for different parts of the wing. In the P51D's case, the two airfoils are similar except for their thickness, which is 16.5% for the root and 11.4% for the tip. The thicker wing at the root is used to make room for the landing gear and more fuel, and for a structural reason we'll get to later. Now let's look at the lift coefficient and drag coefficient as a function of angle of attack for both of these airfoils. The yellow curve is the root airfoil and the green curve is the tip airfoil. The maximum lift coefficient is the maximum lift the wing can produce per unit of area, which is an important metric for an airfoil. All else being equal, an aircraft with a higher seal max will turn tighter and that's certainly an advantage. As you can see, the thicker root airfoil has a significantly higher CL max of around 1.4 compared to 1.2 for the thinner tip airfoil. The thicker airfoil also stalls later. As a general rule, a thicker airfoil has a higher CL max than a thinner airfoil. If we go down to the drag coefficient graph, we see that the thinner airfoil has less drag at low values of angle of attack compared to the thicker airfoil, which is useful for high speed flight. However, as soon as the angle of attack is above 4 degrees, the thicker airfoil has the advantage and produces less drag. There is often a trade-off between lift and drag for airfoils. Now let's talk about wing geometries. You can group them in three main types, which are rectangular, tapered, which means that the tip cord is smaller than the root cord, and of course, elliptical. There are two factors that govern wing geometry. There's the structural one, which we'll get to later, and then lift-induced drag factor. Lift-induced drag is the drag generated whenever lift is created. For a given wing area in a wingspan, induced drag is minimized when the lift distribution is elliptical. That's the point of having elliptically shaped wings like the Spitfire. Since elliptical wings are more time consuming to manufacture and they come with their own set of issues, most aircraft have tapered wings to mimic the, the elliptical lift distribution as best as they can to reduce lift-induced drag. Usually, a wing twist is used in conjunction with a taper to get even closer to the elliptical lift distribution to further reduce induced drag. Another reason to introduce twist to an aircraft wing is to make sure the wing root stalls before the wing tip so that the aircraft conserves roll control in the event of a stall. Wings produce as much lift as the weight of your aircraft multiplied by the G load. For a typical World War II fighter pulling 9 Gs, the wing needs to withstand around 45 tons of force which is equivalent to 11 elephants. As such, the wing needs to be strongly built, but weight is a big concern in aircraft, so aeronautical engineers need to make the wing as light as possible as well. That brings me to talk about the structure of an aircraft wing. Here you can see a cutaway of a P-51 wing with its internal structure. The two beams that run the span of the wing are the front and rear spars respectively. You can see the fuel tank enclosed between the two spars here and the guns here. The structure that gives the airfoil shape to the wing are the ribs that go from the leading edge to the trailing edge and there are many along the span of the wing. The spars are the main load carrying structure in the wing, 
and I'll explain how they are efficiently shaped to carry lift loads with the help of a special guest, Mr. Ruler. Here is my setup. My old phone represents the lift force on the wing, and the ruler represents the spar. On the left image, the ruler is face down on the desk, and on the right, the ruler is in the vertical position. How much the ruler bends to the load is proportional to how close the ruler is to breaking. On the left, the ruler is bent a few degrees, but on the right, there is no noticeable bending. That's because the orientation of the ruler on the right is much more efficient at carrying the load, so you can make a much lighter wing by having the spars run perpendicular to the lift or load. That's precisely what wing spars do. You can think of them as I-beams. It's the top and bottom parts of the spar that carry the vast majority of the load, and there are even holes in the central part of the spar to make it lighter with little effect on its load-bearing capability. That's also where wing thickness comes in. Intuitively, you may think that, that a thicker wing would be heavier than a thinner wing, but it's the opposite. A thicker wing al allows for a taller spar, and the taller the spar, the more efficient it is at carrying loads, so it can be made lighter. There's a trade-off between a low drag thin wing and a light thick wing. Next up is an important geometrical characteristic called aspect ratio, which is wingspan squared divided by wing area, which is essentially how wide the wing is compared to the span. Aspect ratio is a big factor in lift induced drag. For example, the TA-152H has a very high aspect ratio for a fighter, while the F-8F Bearcat has a low aspect ratio, and that's why the TA-152H has good energy retention during maneuvers, while the Bearcat does not. A higher aspect ratio wing will also roll worse, not because of inertia, but because of something called the helical wingtip speed. I'll talk more about that in a dedicated roll rate video. The drawback of a higher aspect ratio wing will be explained with the help of Mr. Ruler once again. Again, we have the ruler sporting the weight of the phone on the two images. But on the image on the right, the length of the ruler that is sticking out of the desk is much smaller, and that represents a lower aspect ratio, while the image on the left represents the higher aspect ratio wing. The amount of bending of the ruler is proportional to how close it is to snapping. As you can see, the longer ruler bends more than the shorter ruler, and hence it is closer to breaking, and would require more structural mass to be able to withstand the same load as the shorter ruler. It's the same principle as with aircraft spars. The higher the aspect ratio, the higher the wing weight will be. Using an aircraft wing weight prediction equation from Raymer, the bible of aircraft design, and calibrated on real P-51 wing weight data, we get a wing weight of 845 kilograms, which is around 20% of the gross weight of the P-51. And this is with an aspect ratio of 5.83. If the P-51 had the same aspect ratio as the TA-152H of 8.87 and nothing else was changed, the wing weight would be 1,175 kilograms, around 40% heavier and representing 28% of the gross weight. Mm -hmm. That's a significant weight increase of 8% and it would reverse in turn and climb by 8%. Once again, there's a trade-off here. If the aircraft is meant to climb fast, a high aspect ratio is not worth it. If the aircraft is designed as a high altitude interceptor where it will be flying at low indicated airspeeds, then a high aspect ratio will be worthwhile, like in the case of the TA-152H. An example of synergy is having a thick airfoil and a high aspect ratio wing, since the thick airfoil will compensate the weight increase of the high aspect ratio wing, and since the aircraft will be flying at low indicated airspeeds, the extra drag from the thick airfoil isn't as big of a disadvantage and will be eclipsed by the lower induced drag of the higher aspect ratio wings. Next up is dihedral. Dihedral is the angle at which the wings are bent upwards. Dihedral is necessary on low mounted wings to provide roll stability. Roll stability is the natural tendency of an aircraft to return to wings level flight after disturbance in the roll axis. To demonstrate this, I'm in the C547 in full reel controls with a joystick. The engine is on, but there's no torque since the propellers are contra-rotating. I'll give the aircraft a bank angle and then let go of the stick, and the aircraft slowly but surely returns to wings level.
there we go. And let's see it again to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Beautiful. Now let's talk about wing sweep. Wing sweep delays the onset of wave drag, which is the drag due to the creation of shock waves on the wing when the local airspeed over the wing reaches the speed of sound. The airspeed over the wing reaches the speed of sound even though the aircraft is still subsonic because air accelerates when it reaches the wing and it's the difference in speed between the top and the bottom of the wing that creates the required lift for flight. Since only the airspeed perpendicular to the leading edge contributes to the formation of shock waves, sweeping the wings back increases the critical Mach number and delays the onset of wave drag. As you can see on the historical trend for wing sweep as a function of Mach number, the faster the aircraft, the higher the wing sweep, but it's not necessary for subsonic aircraft. Sweeping the wings decreases the maximum lift coefficient, which worsens the takeoff and landing performance as well as the turn performance of the aircraft. As always, there's a trade-off, and in this case it's between reducing wave drag or decreasing stall speed. That concludes the video. I hope you found it educational. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more and stay useful.